In this recording, we will look at an example of using implicit differentiation to find the derivative of y with respect to x. In general, implicit differentiation is useful when your expression is a mixture of the two variables you are considering so that it is difficult or impossible to rearrange it for the variable that you are wanting to find the derivative of with respect to the other one. So for instance, when you're wanting to find dy dx, if you have an expression involving x's and y's where it's very awkward or impossible to make y the subject, then that would be a good candidate for using this method. But how do we go about this? Well, it's first worth noting that if z is a function of y, and in turn y is a function of x, then obviously z is of the form f of g of x if we're thinking of x and y as defined above. And by the chain rule, the derivative of z with respect to x is then the derivative of z with respect to y multiplied by the derivative of y with respect to x. That is, derivative with respect to x of f of y is obtained by differentiating f of y with respect to y and then multiplying the result by dy dx. And this result is quite useful when we're using implicit differentiation. So let's work through the following example. We want to find dy dx given x squared plus y squared plus 2 sine y equals 5x minus 8y. So here, making y the subject would be impossible. Therefore, we need to use implicit differentiation. The way we start is to differentiate both sides with respect to x. That is, we want to find the derivative with respect to x of x squared plus y squared plus 2 sine y. The result of that must be equal to the derivative with respect to x of 5x minus 8y. Now by linearity, we could break this up term by term since we simply have terms that are added and subtracted. That is, we would want the derivative with respect to x of x squared plus the derivative with respect to x of y squared plus the derivative with respect to x of 2 sine y, which would be equal to derivative with respect to x of 5x minus derivative with respect to x of 8y. First term here, derivative with respect to x of x squared, that's just standard derivative, 2x. But with this next one, derivative with respect to x of y squared, we need to take a bit more care. That is where it becomes the derivative with respect to y of y squared times dy dx, based on what we saw before. That is, whenever we have a function of y, but we're differentiating with respect to x, we must first differentiate it with respect to y, then multiply by dy dx. Similarly with our next term, again that's a function of y that we're wanting to differentiate with respect to x. So it'll be derivative with respect to y of 2 sine y times dy dx. Then on the right hand side, derivative with respect to x of 5x, that's fine, that's just 5. But again this last one, derivative with respect to x of 8y will be derivative with respect to y of 8y times dy dx. So what have we got? We've got 2x plus differentiating y squared with respect to y gives 2y. So that's 2y dy dx. The next one, differentiating sine y with respect to y gives 2 cos y for that whole term. And that's times dy dx. Then on the right hand side, we've got 5 minus 8y will become 8 when we differentiate it with respect to y. So on that side we've got 5 minus 8 dy dx. Now what? 
Well, what are we actually looking to find? We're actually wanting to find the derivative of y with respect to x, that is dy dx. And what we have now is a series of terms added and subtracted, some that involve dy dx and some that do not. So we actually need to rearrange this equation so that all terms containing dy dx are on one side. I usually find it's easiest to put them on the left-hand side and everything else that does not contain dy dx is on the right. So here we have a couple of terms involving dy dx on the left already. So I'll just rewrite those. But on the right-hand side, we also had 5 minus 8 dy dx. Therefore, to rearrange that, we need to add 8 dy dx to both sides so that that appears on the left. Then on the right-hand side, that 5 will stay there. And we also subtract across this 2x. So that is subtracted from both sides as it does not contain dy dx. From here, we now simply take dy dx out as a common factor on the left since it is multiplied by each of these terms, giving the following result. And finally, if dy dx is multiplied by all of these terms on the left, we can make it the subject by dividing both sides by this expression. That is, we get dy dx equal to 5 minus 2x divided by 2y plus 2 cos y plus 8. So that is an example of implicit differentiation. The main things to remember being that when you have an expression like this involving x and y, where you want to find dy dx, when you differentiate a function of y with respect to x, it must be the derivative of the function with respect to y times dy dx. That is why that happened with the y squared, the 2 sine y, and the negative 8y. The other thing to remember is that once we've differentiated term by term with respect to x, we then rearrange to make dy dx the subject.